Dude, what has been going on with Chicken lately? Did he finally get rid of his schizophrenia? Guess I'll check his channel out. What the fuck? <laughs> Alright, so if you haven't caught up with my channel since, oh god, the Middle Ages at this point, you probably wouldn't know this, but I was kind of on a streaming run on this channel. And by that, I mean I made a diss track with my friend, and then I proceeded to pat Mika for six hours. I still haven't uploaded the main channel video in months, by the way. Anyways, around the one minute mark of that glorious run, I actually got a good idea from a viewer for a website, which was basically just a head padding simulator. Now, that's a cute idea and all, but how do we make it interesting? You know, more epic. And also, how the fuck is this even possible? For context, Blue Archive is built on Unity, which is a game engine, and more importantly, there are various ways you can actually have a Unity game inside HTML, but I- I don't know how to do that. Do I look like a game dev to you? Alright, but maybe, maybe- maybe there is a way that we don't have to use Unity. So I guess the best way to start is actually to check out the L2Ds. So I'm pretty sure we all know how L2Ds work in Blue Archive by now, and if you don't, go play the game. But at a more micro level, the name L2D is basically a fucking lie. It uses Spline actually, which is another program that specializes in rigging 2D shit. But what it also specializes in is being expensive as fuck. At least for what I'm trying to do. Yeah, I, I know most professionals use it, so. So I have a few friends who sent me legitimate unused copies of Spine. And basically now I have an older version of Spine running. And what I didn't do was download Mika's L2D assets on various known GitHub repositories, unpack the texture files in Spine, and then use a skeleton file with the new unpacked textures to be able to inspect and edit Mika's L2 spine rig. Now, hypothetically, this comes at a notable issue, which is the fact that Mika's swimsuit model won't work here because just like human spines, spine 2D is not backwards compatible with older models. So since Mika's swimsuit model was built on spine 4.x, it can't be run in Spine 3.x. The same thing for Mika's regular model being built on Spine 3.x. It can't run on Spine 4.x. Now this is actually a big deal because the library that Spine gives out for free only works for 4.2. I tried doing older versions but it just doesn't work. It only loads for 4.2. Wait a minute. <laughs> there is no fucking way that's how it works. Alright, so we got the potentially expensive side of making this website out of the way, but how am I going to do literally the other 90% of the project? Because while yes, there is a pat animation in these L2Ds, in the actual game, the way you move your mouse or finger dictates where the student's head goes, and that's not in the animation. Hell, what bone do I even fucking move? This shit's got more bones in my nearest obituary, holy sh- You know what, let's not worry about that right now. We can deal with the simpler parts right now instead, which is basically just getting a general forehead hitbox and tracking cursor movements when you hold down on it. In order to detect paths, I'm also going to add a detection handler that can detect when you go from right and then switch your direction to left, thus counting as one head pad. Oh, oh sorry, I'm getting a call. Oh, oh you're saying I already did all of that eight hours ago? Oh wow, wow who could have seen that coming? Yeah, so it's not too complicated, it's just tracking your mouse when you hold down on this hitbox right here every 10 milliseconds. From there, it can detect if you went right or left during that tick, as well as if you made a substantial enough movement. So while yes, you can just stand still and not break your head pad streak, you won't get any points from it, so th there really is no point. If you want more detailed explanations for the scoring system and all that logic, you can actually check out my Ko-Fi, and I'll just post more detailed explanations for paid users there. I don't know man, I need money. <laughs> Okay, so now we have to do some of the animations. It's actually really intuitive to go from one pose to another in Spine, which in this case is going from Mika's idle animation to her pet animation because she hunches over a little bit. You can achieve this type of effect on Spine itself by having an idle animation on channel 0 or layer 0 while having the animation you want which would be pet A and pet M on channels 1 and 2 and A and M are basically for the body and then the facial expressions. And then by just having a reference to your spine player, or well, well I, I named my variable that, but basically just by being able to reference to that playback, you can actually manipulate any pose or anything like that beyond what the documentation says you can do. 
So after that, with just a little bit of code, we can have it so that holding down on the hitbox switches Mika from her regular idol to her pat idol. Okay, but the issue still persists. How the fuck are we going to get these patty motions into a website? Because, you know, this doesn't really use Unity. Do I look like a Nexon employee to you? Do you think I know how this shit works? Well, I'm not a Nexon employee, but I, I do know how it works now. So, but chicken, how did you even understand it? You can't even extract the L2D or properly open it. So how do you know what bones are in there and stuff? Well, I have this neat little trait that all humans except my rank teammates seem to have, which is this beautiful thing called pattern recognition. For example, all Blue Archive characters have he all playable Blue Archive characters have heads. And to that extent, all playable Blue Archive characters can get pat and have very similar head pat logic. And it should be known that the multi-billion dollar company that hires professionals that know what they're doing hire professionals that know what they're doing by that i mean i i found a bone that controls head pets and it and it works for pretty much every character now for some of you smart asses you guys are probably now wondering how i can even animate this because those smooth pose transitions is for switching between set animations not positions well before animation i had to first make sure the head was turning so i made some generic code that gets a total distance to the left or right that the cursor is going from the original position and then it clamps it down to a max value of around 120 pixels, I think, for the max turn. And then it translates that to the max head turn angle. And by angle, I mean the Y position. And from there, we do the definition of animation, which is a series of images changing at fast speeds. AKA, I changed the position of the bone each tick. And just like that, we have a pseudo memorial lobby in HTML. All it took was about 14 hours of coding. And sure, we don't have special effects and such, but who cares? All that matters is that we were able to get the job done without having to pay for spine. What we should be worried about is how the fuck I'm gonna do the rest of the website. Because if there's one thing I suck absolute balls at, it's server-based things. Such as... I don't chicken do the transition. Well, in order for us to get a leaderboard, we first need a scoring system, and that's actually really simple. See, a common issue with my past websites was that, since all my variables were in regular scripts, it all belonged to the document, aka the page that you are on. This leads to a lot of issues, mainly the fact that you can easily change your score by just typing score equals 50 in console, but this can easily be solved by using a module script but I don't know what the fuck that is, so I'm not gonna go further into it. All you really need to know is that for game variables and logic, I put them in module scripts, and for settings like volume and such, I put those in regular scripts. Although, now that I think about it, you can't really type in console score equals 50 if you're holding down on the mouse. But, uh... From there, I just gotta rip some assets from a past project I made that was also about swimsuit Mika. Damn, it took me that long to upload a video, huh? And do a bit of simple JavaScript code to make a live score counter that uses images. Okay, so for leaderboards, we have to use something called a database. So once I stop patting Mika, instead of immediately sending my score over to the database, I actually get the leaderboard from the database over to my website through some spaghetti code I made. And basically, my website will do a bunch of checks with the current leaderboard to see if I made it onto the leaderboard in the first place. And if I did, then it'll tell me what place I got, and then to type my name down so I can rightfully take my place amongst my fellow mental asylum patients. It'll then get my name and my score and make a new leaderboard and that's the new database kind of deal. If you didn't understand what I just said, basically I pat Mika, I get points, I get shit from a database, the website checks if I made it onto the database's leaderboard, if I do, I get to type my name. There was some other stuff too, like formatting and styling and such, but honestly, I can't do CSS for the life of me. Also, who gives a shit? So moving on. Yo, Editor Chicken here. So if you pay attention to our video a little bit, you notice that if you make it onto the leaderboard, you'd want me to be on first place, but no, it's this motherfucker named Koyuki with, oh dear. So you're probably wondering, how did they do this? Well, I have this trait called being lazy. And because this is just a silly website, I decided to not go with any backend or any type of server, except the server that I'm hosting this on. So basically no server processes, which means that every user technically has access to the API key, meaning that they can literally write jack shit for whatever score they want and just make the call and the, the the what's firebase gonna do they're, they're not gonna do anything they have permission so an easy way to prevent this is something we did like for AmiAmi, Ami, which was basically just having a backend that is separate from the website that you call 
and yeah we can do that but th this is a silly website also because in that video aonal handed most of that backend aspect not me so yeah may may maybe i'll get into it in another video one day but uh no <laughs> oh dear anyways i'll probably strip this program down into just the l2d hitbox and padding if i make this open source i honestly think it's really cool if you want the full source code uh, I don't know. I'll probably post it on Ko-Fi with deeper explanations. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, uh, Happy Hanukkah if you're Jewish. I, I don't really care. I'm probably going to do something that'll land me in a mental hospital in the foreseeable future anyways. Also, I know I kind of made fun of the fact that Spine is so expensive, but no hate to Spine. Their program is made for professionals who are pretty much the best at their craft. So yeah, it's understandable that it's expensive. And it's also really good too, so. I also think it's really admirable the fact that they are doing a one-time payment and then you basically get all future updates as well instead of a subscription service like a a company. Oh yeah, and one final note, uh, if anybody here works at Nexon, MX Games, or Yostar, or something Blue Archive related, uh, uh, this, th th this is, this is my business email, uh, please contact me, I do need a job. <laughs>